People are wondering why they got this hat on, man. <laughs> what, what, what type of hat? Who wears these type of hats? Uh, mariachis. Yeah. And also, um, I heard the royalty. Yes, I yeah, I mean charros. 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 <laughs> so, would charros listen to this music? No. No. <laughs> no, listen to Antonio, Antonio Aguilar. <laughs> No, yeah, no. No, no, Charles, Antonio Aguilar. Antonio? Aguilar. Aguilar. Dos tacos de pastor con piña. Yes? Oh, yeah. Yeah? That's it. So how do you dance to this? How do you dance to this? Yeah, okay. Did you love Yeah. You just dab in the middle. In Colombia. <laughs> so you know the you know the song? Yeah. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, sing it, Perla. Come on, we want we want to hear you sing it. Right into the mic. That's why we gave you the mic. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know the song. I don't know the song. So when I first wore this hat, I was wearing it backwards. <laughs> I thought it flips up, you know, like your. But but not. <laughs> yeah, that's it. See. Awesome. Cancun fever, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Worn by the chados, and the chados in Mexico are? Uh, they're like um, valientes, they're like people who like um, lasso and, and uh, ride bulls and all that's that stuff, yeah. Cool. That's what they do. Well, that's me. <laughs> We're riding this bull called <laughs> entrepreneurship, man. Yeah, I was gonna right? Say. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, what do you call it, the, the, um, the, the, the bullfighter. Matador. The ma yeah, matador. Or I'm you a man. the one riding the bull, which is a jinete. Woo! I'm not sure if I'm going to ride a bull. I'm going to last on a bull. But uh, Isaias Pauda just came down. He says, man, a legend in Mexico, Antonio Aguilar. He knew it. I know. Wow. Isaias Pauda knows it. BB Sierra says, she goes, I love the hats. <laughs> awesome. Uh, very good, guys. Well, uh, great to be with you guys here. So I have in studio our friends from our Des Plains office, led by Rudy and Rosie Ortiz. Uh, this is Perla and Tony. So what's going on, guys? Awesome. Just excited to be here. Yeah, I'm we're excited so excited. I'm glad, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> These guys are rising entrepreneurs. And uh, the, topic today, the topic today is five things you should expect when starting a business, especially in the insurance industry. So I know some of you can't take me seriously, but I'll just put this hat right down here. I'll put it right here so you guys know that uh, we just came back from Cancun. By the way, um, Kevin, why don't you show some of the pictures we have from uh, Cancun? So, uh, we are out there with some of our best friends in business, um, um, uh, Patrick Bed David and Jennifer Bed David, uh, our friends in PHP Agency, and so um, we took our friends. Uh, we we took our historic. Uh, where's the where's the toes in the sand picture? You got the toes in the sand picture there of us on the beach. We'll show, we'll show you this picture here uh, in a second. But uh, we took this photo uh, because and there's, there's a there's a story behind this photo. It's called Toes in the Sand. And the reason why we take this Toes in the Sand picture is um, my promise to a lot of new entrepreneurs. They're starting new. I'm coaching them. I'm mentoring them. Right? And um, this photo is, is pretty symbolic in the fact that I tell them this. I say, you know what? You're starting a business. You're breaking away from the, the middle class thinking, the employee mentality. And you're going to start thinking like an entrepreneur. You're going to start thinking like a boss. Not your boss boss, but a boss in terms of you making boss decisions for yourself for once. And um, so you got, that, you, got that, you got that picture up. So uh, let me show you this photo. I think it's coming up here in a second. There's a little bit of a delay. But uh, this photo is called, we call it Toes in, no, no, no. The, the, uh, it says Cancun. By the way, keep it there. Uh, this is our family. We took our family out there. Uh, this is in the ruins of Tulum. Uh, imagine this city was filled with Mayan civilization. Wow. And uh, we were there and, and we were able to go through a little bit of a history lesson. Uh, we got to understand that there's a controversy when it comes to this actual place doing human sacrificing. No. How, many, how many saw the movie um, Apocalypto? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah actually, some, some, actually there was, it's funny when we talk about Apocalypto. Really? Because um, I went to like this little dance. Uh -huh. And so some guy took me to dance. He's like, Apocalypto. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, because your feet are all dusty, you know. <laughs> so it triggered that memory for Perla. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs>
I'm thinking about the guy running through the jungle trying to save yeah, his own yeah. life. Yeah. She's, to she's thinking about survive. dirty feet. <laughs> <laughs> she's got, she got roasted on her feet. Yeah, she did. <laughs> That's what happened. So uh, our family went, we, uh, we, we took our family to uh, Tulum. That's our, our family. We took our staff. We took um, Puebla Elizaraga. Uh, we took Karen Love and her daughter. We just had a, a phenomenal time. Uh, the picture that you're seeing right now is our photo with our toes in the sand. Is there any way we can expand that? Uh, expand that uh, the photo but we took this picture called toes in the sand here's why when people start entrepreneurship they said Matt well, I want to be mentored I want to be part of your mastermind I want to be part of PHP agency we tell them listen do you are you here to be liked or are you here to be successful naturally the answer is I want to be successful well awesome well my promise is my job is to make you successful it's not for you to like me right well what does that mean Matt so I'm gonna ask you to do a lot of things that you are probably uncomfortable doing you're probably gonna do some things that uh, you don't like hearing. You're probably gonna do some things. We'll be, by the way, we're discussing some of those things. But you probably won't, I'll probably won't be your favorite person for the first three to six months. But I promise you, I promise you, you're gonna like the results. I promise you, you're gonna start going full time as an entrepreneur. I promise you, your bank account is gonna start changing. I promise you, as in, in this example, your toes in the sand will be with me in Cancun. And guess what happened? These guys showed me Cancun on an all expenses paid trip by PHP agency. And this is our historic photo. So anybody that we coach and mentor for a, a number of, uh, a, a number of uh, months, they will get qualified for trips. They will get qualified for things uh, that will allow them to be successful in business. It is off. So that's what we call toes in the sand. Um, is, there, is there another uh, photo there from, um, from Cancun? That's with Patrick but David probably, the one with the sunset. And we took this photo uh, with Patrick but David, uh, with his wife Jennifer. We had dinner out in town in Cancun. Uh, phenomenal steaks, phenomenal seafood. I mean, the, 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 sh the, the shrimp is like, it's not those little shrimps. Yeah, it, 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 it was the opposite of the word shrimp. <laughs> jumbo. Not even jumbo shrimp. It was like, <laughs> like lobster. That's how big the shrimp. And, the, and then the lobster was huge. And wow. so the, the, the other picture there with Patrick. Uh, you got it? Okay. So there's another picture here with Patrick and then our, our friends uh, Rodolfo and Ceso, Ceci uh, Vargas out of Houston. Uh, this is a pretty epic photo uh, from there. So I just want to share that with you guys because, you know, listen, uh, one of the things that we, we have in business uh, over time is success. And uh, uh, when, we, when we're starting a business, especially in the insurance industry, uh, we, we have a tendency to say, you know what, I'm excited. I want to go in business. People see it. They see the Facebook ads. They see the infomercials. I mean, every time you click on a YouTube video now, yeah. some guy's promoting his thing, mm -hmm. his advertising agency, um, buy leads from me, I'll show you how to be a social media master and blah, 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 blah. Um, I'll show you how to make hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions mm -hmm. in 90 days. Some of those promises, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you see people this summer, like us, on vacation. You see people um, in their cars driving around. You see people posting pictures about their house that they're buying, et cetera, et cetera. And people get excited. Well, wow, is entrepreneurship really like that? Um, is, is entrepreneurship really going to give me the vacation, the house, the cars, the time, the, the quality, quality time with my family? Um, and, and, I, and I'd say, you know what, there's, there's a difference there. There's different amounts of, of perspective that you see because there's people there that have a good job or a good business. And uh, I call them income rich or opportunity rich. But at the end of the day, who's really building wealth? Because they see a lot of guys broke at $30,000 a year. At the same time, I see guys broke at $300,000 a year. I see guys broke at $3 million a year. I see guys broke at $30 million a year. Because they're not creating any wealth. Because the more income you make, sometimes people spend the same. And uh, this book here that we've been reading is The Millionaire Fast Lane. Uh, it was written by a guy named uh, MJ DeMarco. He's actually out of Illinois. He went to uh, Northern Illinois uh, University. He's a Husky. But uh, let, me, let, me share with you some, let me share with you some stats. Some stats he writes out of this book. According to U.S. Census Bureau in 2000, before the technology implosion of 2001, and before the financial crisis of 2008, here's some disturbing facts. People under the age of 55 is 50% likely to have zero net worth or negative net worth. 55 wow. years old. Wow. So they live their adult life for about 30 years and over 57% of them have zero net worth or negative net worth. Jeez. An estimated 62% of all households in the United States have less than $100,000 in net worth. 89% of all 35 and under, if you're 35 and under, 89% of you have a net worth of less than $100,000, according to the census. 
A person in the 35 to 45 age range has a median net worth of $13,000, excluding home equity. Um, uh, a 2007 Census Bureau, by the way, this is at the height of the market. A 2007, 2007 Census Bureau survey, 61% of all people who earn income earned less than 35000 a year. Wow, that's scary. Yeah. And it's scary? Yeah. Wow. So there's a huge attraction to people posting stuff on Facebook. Cars, yes. vacation, infomercials, right? We, we, we've all seen it. And victim yeah. to it. <laughs> and, vic and victim to it, right? Um, I'm sure you guys have seen it. Um, bye bye, quick, quick break. Kendra, Joe Galat just joined us from Louisiana. Uh, Veronica Cruz just uh, dropped us a comment too as well. Sergio Haro, good afternoon. Tina Persal, glad you love the hat. <laughs> uh, so ba back to my thought here is that there's a huge attraction to people wanting to start a business, wanting to create more money, income, cash flow, wealth, right? Because here, here's the difference. There's the difference between people that are rich and there's the people that are wealthy. Rich, I say this, there's, not, there's a big difference. Rich people have a lot of income, okay? Uh, but the sad part between rich people and wealthy people or people who are building wealth like we are is that rich people are just one sale away from a financial disaster. They are one job layoff away from a financial disaster. They are one emergency, car emergency. You're talking about somebody who got their car broken down. Yeah. They're one car breakdown from a financial disaster. Mm -hmm. Like they're saving up a hundred bucks, they're saving up 500 bucks, they're saving up a thousand bucks, saving up 10,000 bucks, and one thing goes wrong and they're back to, back to zero. Mm -hmm. They're back to disaster. They charge you the credit card. That's what rich people are. Wealthy people are people are thinking, man, how do I get away from that? And some people are watching the video right now and say, man, I'm not either rich or wealthy. <laughs> well, great, that's you. And that's why I'm glad you're joining this, this, this video and this podcast. So, uh, I remember um, somebody dropped a comment on my Instagram at Money Smart Guy. I was posting pictures of my kids. I was posting pictures of, of our vacation. They said, man, you're just lucky. Are you freaking lucky? I hate that word. Right? I don't like that word. Right? We don't like that word. It's no. like lucky. So um, here's how we define luck. Okay? Here's how I define luck. Luck is this. It, number one is belief. We've been friends on Facebook for about two Excellent, excellent. So that's how she went from one transition now over here. Cool. Yeah. Tell them. So my background, I did wireless retail. I and um, wealthy people are doing different things than us. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I kind of caught the passion of being an entrepreneur. So I started a marketing business, network marketing, different things like that. I was mm -hmm. teaching marketing tactics. But like any small business, you know, it failed. I, I went under. I didn't have any coaching. I didn't have any accountability. Um, mm -hmm. So... One of the young ladies who worked for me at Verizon, who I've been kind of sidelined, like, stop trying to talk to me, Iris, stop trying to talk to me. And she, one day she reached out to me, and it just caught me at the right time. And um, I came out to check out what PHP was about, a little skeptical at first, and I fell in love the same day uh -huh. with the concept, the mission, who we help, who we do it for. Yeah. And just the, I think what caught my attention here was, hey, you got a chance to, to grow and become uh, the person that you always want to be. So I've been here ever since, and, and I'm right now director working on becoming an agency owner. So I'm excited uh, about what's going to happen and also offering opportunities to people like Perla who are new. I think that excites me more than anything, is just seeing the fire in the new people that come on board right. and just speaking life into them. So that's my new passion. That's awesome. I love it, Tony. Perla, can you, can you do that again? I think our video cut out. Can you, can you uh, give your background uh, again? Because I think the Internet went out here for a second. So share your little <laughs> background again. Yeah, so... Uh my name is Perla Rodriguez, and a background about me, um, I've been in the financial industry for about two years already. I used to be with Primerica, uh, and then um, well, I was working as customer service representative of Peapod, uh, which is a little delivery grocery company, you know, see little green cars, you know, you know mm -hmm. trucks, that's Peapod. <laughs> um, and I was with Primerica, so I wasn't in the, fi I was in the financial industry, um, but I transitioned over to PHP and how I got the opportunity was actually through Tony. So Tony and I, we actually met um, Grant Cardone, is an entrepreneur, uh, follow him by the way, and he is one of our guest speakers. Um, so I'm really excited, I'm such a Grant, you know, I'm such a huge fan of his. Um, and he was, you know, he posted on, on social media that he was gonna be at the NBC Center in Chicago. And so um, Tony introduced himself um, to me and my other friend uh, that did Primerica. And he's like, you know, he was doing network marketing at that time, and I was doing Primerica. 
and he added me on Facebook. He was, you know, we were friends for like two years already. And mm-hmm. then finally, he cool. presented the opportunity of PHP, and I was like, okay, I'm definitely not going to do primary anymore. Um, so. We, so, need, we need to get into that in a second, yeah. <laughs> but uh, continue, continue. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to do Primerica anymore. Uh, so when he presented PHP to me, I was like, man, I love PHP. <laughs> yes, I'm telling you, know what? I'm ready. Let's do this. That's <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love it. Cool. So you learned a little bit about Perla, then learned a little bit about Tone. And so um, j- just so I don't forget why, why did you say, you know what, uh, uh, Primerica, what was the difference for you? Uh, Primerica versus PHP. Uh, well, there was a lot of differences for me. Um, first of all, uh, when I was with Primerica, they were they were kind of they were mentally checked out already, you know. So it was kind of they weren't helping people as they should, you know. Um, they would, you know, new people would come on board, and it was kind of like they were just a joke. They were just another another number, and you know, I had my own team there. I was building my own team, but. It was kind of hard for me to be a leader when I didn't have a leader to look up to okay. or a mentor to look up to. So when I when I was looking at PHP, I was comp- you know comparing PHP and Primera. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, PHP, no doubt. You know, we have some amazing mentors. People who are willing to help you. People to go out of the way so that way, you know, if you want it, like they're definitely there for you. And Primera, they just like kind of threw you like to the side, and it was just kind of like. There were the sales, like you know what I mean. Like, no, you have to, you have to get this person. You have to do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. And PHP is like, we have integrity. Mm-hmm. You know, at PHP, we have integrity. We leave with integrity, and with and Primerica has a rougher way of doing things. I got gotcha. And they do it here. PHP. I got gotcha. you, got gotcha. you. So it had to do something with the culture. Yeah, the, uh, the culture, culture was the mentorship. It was different. The environment. It was. Two different companies. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. May, maybe uh, throughout the show, we'll, we'll we'll take some comments and questions from people out there. It says, you know, if I'm looking for an opportunity in starting a business, what are some of the things I need to be looking for? Um, but the purpose of this show is to show you, for those of you who are considering, because I get this all the time, Matt, I, I really am looking at the insurance industry versus real estate versus mortgages versus something else because the insurance industry is such a low cost to get started. Yeah. I mean, I started the business when I was. 23, 24 years old was less than four or 500 bucks. And I was able to start in this industry, get licenses and all that stuff. And I did that for 12 years as a licensed agent advisor. Uh, 2010, 2012, I took a role in the media, dropped my licenses and I was a talking head on uh, this reality show back here. Boom, this uh, reality show back here called MSN Money, uh, uh, sponsored by TD Ameritrade. And so um, anyway, make, make a long story short, it's, it's a phenomenal industry to get involved in because uh, people want what this have. According to Forbes magazine, this is the number one business to start from home. Insurance, yes, it's a home-based business. I know we're in an office right now. You start off at State Farm, but technically you can run this business out of Starbucks. Yeah, I've done it. Right, you've done it. <laughs> Dun- Dunkin' Donuts if you can't afford Starbucks. <laughs> right? Our, our, our producer, Kavan, is, is, is insurance licensed for how, how long? 19 years. 19 years. Wow. So there's, there's so many ways to get involved in business for less than 500 bucks, and the insurance industry is definitely one of them. I was just talking to somebody uh, uh, looking to get involved in real estate. They're going to, to uh, Triton College, the, the course to get real estate licenses, seven to 800 bucks. And, and then once they finally get licensed, they got, they got, they got to spend money to get licensed again, yeah. not just the course. So uh, at, at the end of the day, I think the average realtor, and by the way, realtors, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, it's about 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 dollars to start wow. as a real estate agent, and then you got to you got to pay for the monthly MLS, so so many other things that are involved in real estate. You know, it's a, that's another uh, business to get started to as well. But what should you, viewer, listener of this podcast, watcher of this live video or replay of this video, if you're looking to start a business to make more money? Because the premise of the show is that people aren't making it with their job, and the only way people are getting ahead is like what doing Pearl is doing and what Tony is doing is you know what, take control and start a business. So. What was your thought processes like when, you know, you're like, let me start a business. I'm not sure. Okay, let me start a business. I'm not sure. I mean, I had that coming out of the military. I'm not sure if you guys have any depth or degree. Absolutely, yeah. What, what, what was the areas of hesitation for you, Perla? Um, I, I guess I was just kind of just nervous, kind of, you know, because you, when growing up, especially, you know, when you have no opportunities and then a, a opportunity presents itself to you, it's like, you're, you're not sure, you're kind of scared, you're nervous at the same time, yeah. you know what I mean? You're nervous and scared at the same time, like, 
can I do it? Can I not do it? Can I, you know, so you're going back and forth with your internal self, like you're fighting your internal self. And um, for me, it was kind of like, well, this is what I want to do, kind of, you know, like, this mm -hmm. is what I want to do, and I, I just have to do it. It's like, my family is depending on me, mm -hmm. so I was like, I'm not definitely not going to break my back, because I've worked two to three jobs once, you know, so I was just like, working, I used to work like 10 to 6, then again from 8 to 4.30, so I was like, you know, I worked a lot, so I was kept on, I kept on working, um, and when an oppor this opportunity presented itself to me, I was like, you know, I, I have to take that risk, because my family is dependent on me, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not going to... I'm not going to continue to break my back for someone else when I could break my back and do it for myself. Bingo. You know? So, so instead of working hard for somebody else, right. yes, you rather... Work, work for yourself. Got so, it. yes, I was nervous. I was anxious, but it, I have to do it. it it's, it's a must. It's a must for me. By the way, the insurance industry is known for not recruiting minorities, number one. Oh, wow. Right? So 60%, 80% of PHP agency is minority. Right, so we're doing opposite. So we're disrupting our industry by recruiting a distribution force that's opposite of what the traditional industry is doing, namely multicultural. And also, number two, the industry isn't good at recruiting women. women. Yeah. Yes. And so, uh, <laughs> of the of the people that there, there's more, uh, Tony, I think uh, Patrick was telling me this uh, last week. There's more women agents in PHP than there are yeah. men. Yeah, for, for forty-eight percent, forty-nine or crazy. It's up there. Like yeah. Yeah. And so, um, all right, so Tone, what about you, man? What were some of your fears, if any, of you starting a business coming from? I think I've always been ambitious, but it was that fear like of going all in. Like, man, you know, because I come from a, I had a safe job, you know, I, there's no such thing, but I had a safe job and it's like, man, do I go all in and become an entrepreneur? But then I analyzed just, I analyzed my, m you know, my happiness. I mm -hmm. think that's what it was and it was just, I can either continue down the same path the rest of my life and mm -hmm. get mediocre results, or I can just be the guy in my family who says, you know what, I'm going to jump in off the cliff. Yeah. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to go all in. And once it became a higher purpose than, um, than me just making money, mm -hmm. once it was more like I have to create a legacy, then the, the decision was easy. Kind of like how she said, what else do I have? What other options do I have? I can continue and get the same results from my family, or I could just change the whole legacy and demographic of where my family's headed. And once I put that behind it, all the fears went away, and I just went all in, and I was 100% committed. Got it. And can I interject? And also, like, I don't know if you guys listen to, like, Les Brown, but he says right. a lot. He's like, you know, you, it's, it, there's a difference between having a fear and the fear of having you. Woo! You know? So I was like, Preach it. man, that was, you know, that's what got to me. Because, like, man, I was like, if I overcome my fears, or, like, what, what's the worst that could happen to me? Mm -hmm. Really, honestly, like, that's, ask yourself that question. What is the worst that, that could happen to you? What could happen to me? Like, well, nothing really. Yeah. Like, let's just do it. <laughs> I was, we, uh, so Caesar was yesterday. He's talking about a friend that he graduated college with, or actually, he's about to graduate college with, and uh, he was fearful about getting started in business because he. So Caesar realized that I'm going to graduate here next year, right. and they ain't no job lined up, and and the job that I'm studying for, I really don't even like it, and. So he's encouraging the other classmate, why don't you just get started a business, start a business, start a business. And so he offered him, he offered him a business to start in the insurance industry. And, um, and so he goes, well, dude, I, you know, it's, it's, I don't have the money. Well, well dude, you, you got a cell phone, right? How was, how, that, that, when you went to Sprint to get that cell phone, how much you pay for that phone? 200 bucks. Listen, dude, you spent 200 bucks on a phone. You found the money for that, <laughs> but you can't find enough money to boss up and Start calling your own shots. Yeah. It's all about pride. It's about, it's all about stinking thinking. Okay? So, um, so when, when you guys first started business, is it what you thought it'd be? <laughs> that, at first, I, as an entrepreneur, it was all image. I was like, I have the website. I have the suit. But then when I got in the bill, I'm like, man, you, you need the work ethic. That's really what it is. Like, uh -huh. You need work ethic and accountability. Yeah. But when I first got involved, I, it was all an image to me. It wasn't really hard work and ethic. I thought... If I label myself as an entrepreneur, then I can just go and post videos on the internet. Oh, I'm enjoying my free time as an entrepreneur, but that's not what entrepreneur is. And like you said earlier, that's what a lot of these advertisements online are trying to teach you, but nobody's teaching you, hey, this is hard work. 
but it's hard work for you. It's hard work for legacy. It's hard work to have unlimited free time and income. Yeah. But when you first get in, you think it's just, I'm gonna wear my fancy suit, nice tie. I'm mm -hmm. gonna do a few videos online. I have a nice website, but no, that's just the surface. There's way more behind that. And you know, there's a lot of guys in that space that wanna sell you, you know, don't, don't, don't sell your friends and family, use my lead generation system online and blah, 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 blah. And I think that some of that works, but in, in business, if you want to do serious biz, business development, yeah. you, need, you need relationships. You need to have face-to-face -face skills. You yeah. Because even those leads, eventually, you're going to have to pick up the phone and say, hey, you know, what, what, what are you interested in? Mm -hmm. I'm not against leads, but I, I've learned, because I did lead generation. That mm -hmm. was a part of my business. Right. And I've learned, like, that can be supplemental, extra on the side, maybe 10%, 20% of what you actually, but 90% has to be, you know, kissing babies, shaking hands, you know, talking to family members, sitting in kitchen tables. Yeah. That's where the real uh, empire is built. It's not just online, you know. Online yeah. is just extra that you can build along the way. Yeah, and maybe if, if, you, if, if you want to be in a business where you're selling, I don't know, you know soaps, potions, and lotions, T-shirts, hats, mm -hmm. umbrellas, yeah. and, and there's no real, it's more of a commodity type of business, right. and that's fine. But if you're in a business where you're doing business development, sales, relationship, networking, net weaving, you know, and getting referrals and all that stuff, you need to yeah, need some speak to people, people. Yeah. speak to a human being, which I believe today is an eroding skill. <laughs> when I think uh, about it, I mean, the number one activity, they, let me ask you guys a question. What do you think the number one activity is on everybody's smartphone? Whether it's an Android or an, or an iPhone. What do, you, what do you guys think it is? Tech, uh, Facebooking? Fa it's Facebook. <laughs> yeah, Facebook. It's Facebook. The number, it's not calls, it's not email, it's not GPS, it's not text message. It's your Facebook app. I saw a joke online. It's like back in the days, like, yeah, my phone happens to do internet, and now somebody's like, man, my internet device happens to make calls. <laughs> 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 so it's changed around. The demographic of the phone changed. Yeah. And also, like, if you look at the logo for like Facebook, it's like an F like this, uh -huh. and it's it just it's because people look down at their phones. That's why the F is like. Really. Yeah. I'm got deep with yeah, that. Yeah, and by the way. <laughs> See, right there? Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to look that. It's right. I'm, and I'm like, I'm thinking, let me, let me look at my phone like this. Yeah. So, so I'm a, I'm a t taste, taste book. <laughs> Not Facebook. Because I'm I look at it upright. It's posture. Posture, right? Chiropractor get mad at you. I mean, think about that. I mean, if you're constantly like this, like remove the phone. Yeah. If you're constantly like this, what are you, what state are you in? Can, you're in a depressive state. Yeah. Your body language is depressed. You're, 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 right? Your body's depressed. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. I was trying to have a conversation with my 17-year-old sister. I love her to death, but I just, she's, she's grew up in this generation. So sometimes I'm like, put your phone away. Like, talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just funny when you, when you survey the younger generation, and it's just like, man, we got to teach them some social skills because yep. they're just like this. Yep. And, and they're just, like you said, body language is like that. I'm like, man, I hope your spine doesn't look like that when you're 60, 70 years mm -hmm. old. <laughs> you're 27 years old. 37 years old. We're at the rate now, right? <laughs> exactly. Cool. So, um, looks like uh, Rudy's giving some shout outs. What's up, Rudy? Yeah, Hi, Rudy. Keep an eye on Perla. She's on fire. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, BB, BB says, uh, woo woo to the PHP ladies. Yeah, woo woo. All right. Represent. Very good. Yeah, it's an only going to get bigger. Half my team is women. <laughs> Now think about that. The rest of the financial industry um, are male dominated, and yet you're recruiting and building women. What's it been like for you recruiting and building women into the insurance industry and for your business? Oh man, I love it. <laughs> you know what? I, I love recruiting um, women, honestly. Um, but mo both, I do have you know males, um, and you know on my team as well as females um, and women, but. You know, when you have that empo empowerment with them, when you speak with them, when people, when they come in, they have different ideas and they come in and talk to you, that's, that's amazing. That's awesome. I love being um, around them, being surrounded by them because we, a lot of times what happens with our society nowadays is that we discourage one another. You know, like, oh, that person here, that person there, you know what I mean? Yeah. And what our team is like, man, like, I love you. I love mm. you too. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? And we have that relationship and I love that because it's like, we, instead of, you know, uh, being negative to one another, let's bring each other up as women who are we, we are supposed to meant to be because we are the example, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, the women are the ones that kind of hold everything together. Yeah. So it's just kind of like when we have them and we, and we talk and we have those leadership conversations, it just takes everything to a whole next level. You know, the interesting thing about women today, uh, according to Money Smart Week and the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago surveys, is that in 2010, 60% of all wealth in America shifted into the control of women. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> I remember I shared that stat at a seminar one time. I said, shoot, I got married in 2001. All wealth in my house was shoved to, to my wife in 2001, <laughs> not 2010. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, more women today are, are graduating college, wow. more women, more than men. More women today are in politics. More women wow. today are in business. More women today are, are uh, higher level in corporate America. But you know what the insurance industry does not have? More women. Wow. And who makes a lot of the uh, buying decisions, purchasing decisions in the home? Women. Mm -hmm. So I think you're doing a phenomenal job if, if, if recruiting, attracting women into this industry to go in business for themselves as an agent or building an agency. I think, I think, I think it's, it's a phenomenal move, right? Absolutely. That's my wife. My wife is an <laughs> oh, agent. Sheena. Yeah. Oh, Sheena. She's powerful. That's right. Mm -hmm. My wife, Sheena, she's an agent and she loves it. And uh, she handles all the finances in the household, and she gives me my 40 bucks for the week. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's and, by uh, Monday, right? Is, is, exactly. <laughs> so so let's, let's give you guys some, 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 some ideas. Here are five things that uh, we found to expect when you decide to go in business, especially in the insurance industry. So number one, what I found going into business for myself, and, and please ping, ping off your thoughts on this too as well, is that when I went into business for myself at 23 years old as a United States Marine transitioning out of full-time active duty military combat veteran coming out of the military and into the insurance industry as my transition career, I got to find out who I really was. 100%. Right? Yeah. Like I realized I had big ego. I had big pride. I wasn't as smart as I thought I was. Mm -hmm. And ego and pride and, and acts of delusion don't put money in your business. So, so, so you guys experienced that too as well. Well, yeah. When when I worked, sorry, when I worked at Verizon, they give you in the corporate world sometimes they give you this title, and then you're like, oh, I'm a manager. I'm, I'm a manager of this store, and that kind of blocked me from actually getting involved with PHP earlier because mm. it was every time Iris would reach out to me, I'm like, you used to work for me. Relax, you know, relax. So, you're five so. years younger than me, but around you know around the time when I was open to looking at different options, it was because. I was reading books, and in the books, they talk 90% is like, you have to get rid of your ego because it's stunting your growth. And once I realized that, I mean, I was just like, that's my problem. That's why I haven't been able to get to the next level of success in life is because of my ego. So I always tell this to Iris. You know, I came in, I told Iris, you have me 100%. Wow. I'm that's just maturity, gonna, by the way. Yeah, and I'm just, just going to learn from you. I'm going to shut up. And she's always like, you're so humble. You're so humble. It's because I, I've learned to be that way because you, if you don't, you'll be a failure in life. I see a lot of... Especially coming from the hood, I come from you know the Logan Square, Humble Park area. I see a lot of broke people with big eagles, and it just it, it it's 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 sad because it's like, what are you so proud about? You know, yep. what are you so proud or what are you so prideful about that you don't have anything to show for it? Yep. And I see that all the time, especially coming from the middle to income class. And I was I made an observation. I I have different demographic friends. I have my friends that I went to high school with. Mm -hmm. Went to Lane Tech High School. Shout out to uh, the Indians. Uh, and the Filipinos. <laughs> and the Filipinos are Lane Tech. They dominated, definitely dominated. But uh, all my friends who were wealthy came from wealthy, but always open to at least listen. Yeah. And then my friends from the hood were just like, nah, that's stupid before they listen. So I always grew up, you always taught, oh, rich people are, are they're cocky, they're this, they're that. But when you actually get into the environment, it's like, no. Poor people are more cocky sometimes than the rich people are. Yeah. Not all the time. It's not every case, but the majority of what I'm experiencing. Yeah. I was just like, wow. And that's why they're successful because they're yeah. open to more ideas. You know, I can learn from somebody who, you know, I can meet in the street today. But if I have that ego, that nugget, I may not pick up, and yeah. that can, you know, stunt my growth. So and you know, and by the way, we're talking about broke people and open-minded people. And by the way, it it, it goes across all multicultural ethnic everywhere. Yeah. Ethnic, uh, there's not just because you're Filipino, black, Hispanic, Asian. One's more egotistical or less egotistical than the other. Pride is pride. Mm -hmm. Ego is ego. Mm -hmm. Broke is broke. <laughs> right. And so the the sooner you get past yourself and realize who you are and what you don't have, the sooner you can get armed up with the skills to to have so therefore you can get out of your business what you're looking for yeah, Perla? Exactly. yeah so like for me me too i was i was a bit prideful i wasn't i wouldn't say like i was very prideful but i did have you know like i was pretty pride i had a, like i have a lot of pride though um but what i've noticed is that me too, I, you know when i got upset at something you know i was just like i'm just gonna do it my way you know mm -hmm. I, i've always blamed others for mm. for my actions yeah you know what i mean and i wasn't holding myself accountable. Victimhood. And, right, uh -huh. victim. So yeah, I was a victim, I wasn't a victor. Uh -huh. And so um, when I learned to transition and how to change that, 
man, my, you know, my business, my life was just going, you know, the right yeah. path, you know, yeah. the right way. Because I, I, I learned to stop being a, a victim of my own actions. You know, I, I can't blame people for stuff that happens, that happens yeah. to me because what, whatever happens in life is because of your own actions. You're, you know what I mean? Yeah. So every, every action has a consequence. Yeah. And like Rudy says too, like you can't, you know, don't ever let your ego be bigger than your bank account. <laughs> Always. And so when, when he said that, I'm like, mm, that just, you know, that just touched my soul. Cause like, that's so true. Cause there's a lot of people that you talk to, like, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. Like what, like what Tom was saying. And once you get past that being prideful, when you just finally put your head down, like, what am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Like, why are you like this? Like, why are you being a victim? You know, when you ask yourself those questions of why, uh, what made you do that? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You ask yourself that question, write it down, um, and also, like, your your bad and great habits. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So uh, a lot of that helped me to transition to stop being so prideful and stop, yeah. you know, blaming other people's for my actions. Hold on, I'm gonna take some notes after that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's why entrepreneurs love personal development. Yeah. Oh, as, oh, as soon as they realize this, they're like addicted to anything that'll help them grow. And, I, and, I, and I have a, I'm a big believer that if we teach more entrepreneurship, if we're teaching free enterprise, if we're teaching the right types of capitalism, not crony capitalism, but if we're teaching the right implementation of capitalism and free enterprise, because what changed my life wasn't the sale of a product, right? Like, well, like when I got involved in the insurance industry and financial industry, what changed my life was not because I'm saving 100 bucks in a mutual fund and 150 bucks in a, uh, a variable universal life policy. That's how I got started in the insurance industry. Two, two different products. That didn't change my life. That didn't provide the compounding growth that the compounding growth of my mindset and attitude and the dedication to continue to grow as a person did. That's what changed my life. Yeah. Um, and, and the more you grow, the, the more you grow, the less your ego uh -huh. is, yeah. is, is yes. a part of that, the more your bank account grows. Absolutely. Right? And the more service you can be to others in fixing the problems that your business is, is there for. Mm -hmm. So uh, second thing. So number one, entrepreneurship, to, to what to expect of entrepreneurship, what to expect when starting a business, especially in, insur in the insurance industry, you get to know who you really are. Uh, second thing, it's not get rich quick is not get rich quick. Now, can you make a lot of money fast? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> can you make a lot of money quickly? Absolutely, but it's not get rich quick to the extent that you're gonna be like a millionaire overnight. Now, I say that tongue in cheek because my wife and I in 30 months, over $1.3 million, I say that tongue in cheek, but there's a whole lot of work to it. Why? Because we did step number one. Babe, we are broke right now. We have nothing. We are who we are. Cho choice here is we can do something different. And we realize that, you know what? You can make a lot of money in a short period of time, but it's not get rich quick. How many people do you run across thinking, man, I'm gonna make a lot of money, and they, they pop open the hood to starting a business, and it says, work. They're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> 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 what the heck? Yeah. That's right? about 70% of people I come across. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I try to tell people up front, like, listen, if you're thinking this is a get rich quick, this is not, this is a get wealthy over time. You know, this is gonna, this is gonna challenge you. It's like number one, you're gonna find out who you are, mm -hmm. but this is get wealthy over time. This is a process. Now, when I say long, I don't mean 40 years like a job. I mean five, six, seven years. I always tell people, this is the three, three to seven year plan. Mm -hmm. You can get wealthy in three to seven years depending on how you react to this program. So I, you know, I tell that all the time, but people come, like you said, open up the hood and they're like, oh, so there's work involved. You know, okay. So I try to make that up front, but I even see it outside in other companies. You know, There's mm -hmm. people who, fall victimhood to this, oh, you're gonna make $1,000 tomorrow, you're gonna make $100,000 tomorrow, and it's, it's sad to me because people fall victim to that and then they stray away from entrepreneurship because they think everything entrepreneur is like that. But when our platform, the reason I respect it is it teaches you this is long-term growth and wealth. Mm -hmm. And when I say wealth, like you said earlier, it's not, wealth is not just money, wealth is who you are inside. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. there's some rich people that have terrible relationships. And me, when, one thing I got out of entrepreneurship is you become a better relationship person, and that comes out to you know your significant others, your brothers, sisters. It's like man, you see where in life you went wrong. So it, I always tell people this is get wealthy over time. Give it five, seven years. Some may be faster, some may be slower, but it's at the speed that you want it to be. Uh, Perla. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. For me too. Um, you know, a lot of people. You know, they come up to me like, Hey, Perla, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm just like, Okay, we show them the video. They're interested, you know. And then they come on board like. I'm not gonna do that work. I'm like, okay, well, this business is not for you. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you you have to work. You have to bust your ass. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You you have to put. You have to stay consistent, and you have to put all that work behind it. Um, and I always like it. Well, you're not gonna get rich over time. And I always mm-hmm. ask these people. Like I ask I ask the people that are on my team now. What I asked them before they came on board, I was like, "What are your thoughts on the quitter?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, "Well, they just don't want it bad enough." And I'm like. Okay, so I write it down, you know. So every time they feel like they want to quit, it's like, oh, I thought your your thoughts on the quitter was so and so. You know, I guess you yeah. didn't want it bad enough. You want to leave. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But it's just like, it's it's not a get rich, uh, get rich uh, scheme right away. You're just like, no, you have to put in the work. You're gonna build wealth. You know what I mean? And like he said, it's like you build relationship with people. You start, you know, you see, just different things on the field. You know, people cry to you, and you're just like. Man, yeah. that really touches home because yeah. it's like we're out here to change lives and not so much, you know, about the money. The, the, the money just comes by itself. But when you're out there, you're generally helping people, you care about people, everything starts just coming yeah. your way. And, and, and by the way, uh, if people are looking for get rich quick right away, um, don't you see them like bouncing from company to company, uh-huh. opportunity to opportunity? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and then they're no better. What's worse about it, they're no better over there. And what's worse about it is their reputation and credibility continues to decline as much as they don't think it is. Yeah. Now, I've seen people go from soaps, potions, losses, insurance, real estate, blah, 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 all these different things. And they jump. And then their friends and family like, well, what, what is it this week? Yeah. What company is it this week? Uh, every time you call me, you're always trying to hack something. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, got a, I got a relative of mine. Every time he calls me, how can, listen, I, I, the easiest guy to sell is a sales guy, me. <laughs> uh, you can sell me pretty easily because, number one, I know what you're going through, and yeah, yeah. number two, I'll actually listen to you, right? And, 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 I, and I'll buy, right? Even the telemarketers that call me, I have, I, I, listen, I'm not going to hang up on you and how hard your day is today, and just want to let you know I'm not interested, and please take me off the list. Thank you very much. God bless you. Right? <laughs> Boom. I don't hang up on them because yeah, you know, I know what they, they go through. But um, yeah, people are trying to get rich quick, and that's the reason why people play the lottery. Um, People try to get uh, rich quick overnight, and, and, and in some instances, that's uh, some people get you know play the run and they make a lot of money. That's not every day. That's not predictable, yeah. right? And so I want to work where the odds are in my favor, and I can control the odds. Absolutely. And that's entrepreneurship. Yeah. Okay. Uh, third third thing. Um, when starting a business, people should expect to deal with distractions. And dealing with adversity, <laughs> and oh. setbacks, and heartache, it's my favorite and month, right, uh, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. So, um, uh, oftentimes people deal with you know um, you, you talking about earlier, flat tire, car won't start. That's distractions. Mm-hmm. But what do you got to do as an entrepreneur? Got to keep on fighting. Got to yeah. keep on fighting. Yeah. Got to keep on fighting. You know, <clears throat> you can't you, you can't say oh that's a sign from God. Yeah. No, I hate when people That's say That's an excuse. Don't you yeah. do use oh guys uh, as a cop out. No. Yep. He's the reason, not the cop out. Yeah, yeah. like like Les Brown says, you know, um, God's gift to you is life. And what you give uh, in your life and what how you make your life is what your gift to God. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I use that like, okay, then well, that makes sense. Like yeah. Because he gave me life as a gift for what I do with my life. That's my gift back to God. There you go. Amen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... There's, you're always gonna have distractions. You're always gonna things that you're always gonna have things that come your way and keep on, you know, that are just life's gonna throw punches at you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And um, all of us, we all, all, if you ask everybody who's 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 in, you know, who's an entrepreneur, they've all been through rough patches like Matt. You know what I mean? Um, and that's why I admire you so much because I know that you you had a, <laughs> you had a, you know a struggle. And it's always going to be a struggle, and things are gonna throw. Things are not gonna go your way. Trust me, things won't go your way at all. <laughs> and I'm that type of person. Things will go my way. I'm like, what? It has to go my way. You know, it has to go. What? What is going on? But when there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I keep on, I keep on walking, and I keep on. Even when life is just throwing punches at me, I just keep on moving forward mm-hmm. because I, I know that it's just making me stronger. And everything that happens to me is for a reason, but I'm not gonna allow um, that to be my excuse. I'm not gonna allow a flat tire to be my excuse. Like, I, if I want it bad enough, then I will find a way to get where I need to be. Right. You, know, you know what I mean? Yep. And a lot, a lot of things what happen is that people, they become a victim of things that happen to them. Well, my car didn't start today. Well, I can't find a babysitter, or I can't do this, mm-hmm. and I can't do that. Excuse. 
Yeah. Excuse, I'm sorry. Excuse. I, I'm not. I'm not hearing it anymore. Like, yeah. I'm, you complain about wanting to change your life, but you keep on complaining. Like, you, you're not tired enough. Like, you don't want it bad enough. But when you want it bad enough, and you you want to get where you want to be, you'll do whatever to get there. Yeah. I promise you that. Mm. Over, me up. over, under, or around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, around, yeah. under, or around. I, you're gonna get there. I think my first. One of my first moves. Or through. Or through, yeah. Through, yeah. <laughs> Knock that wall down. <laughs> Knock it down. <laughs> yeah, one of my first mentors in the entrepreneur space said, you have to create a bulletproof mentality. So when I, when I realized that, I, I was kind of happy because he always told me, you, you need to watch out for this, you need to watch out for that. And basically he was prepping me to say, hey, stuff's going to happen. Yeah. SHIT is going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and, but how you, how you respond to that is really your character. Yeah. That's who you really are is how you respond to that. And through that, you have the moral authority to go back and coach people and say, man, I've been through that, dude. Like you, the Dubai story. The Dubai story pumps me up, man. Because mm -hmm. I've been through that. I've been like, man, uh, I don't know if I can go on this free trip. <laughs> but that, those type of stories pump me up. It's who you become. It's what you learn. And then I think the, the confidence is once you get past like the worst, what you thought was the worst situation in life and you're able to get past that, yeah. you become so much more confident and then that's where the magic happens. That's yeah. where the fun and entrepreneurship happens because it's like, dude, bring it. Yeah. You know, it's like, bring it. You're standing there and you're looking up, you're like, bring whatever you got my way because I'm still gonna get around it. And that's when you take control of your life. There's no more excuses. There's no more, oh, I can't make it today. It's no, I'm gonna figure out how to do it. Over, yeah. under, around. And I wanna <laughs> add to that too because I listened to um, St Stephen Furtick, he's like a pastor, you know, and he's like, you know what, awesome. yeah, when your enemy comes at you one way, God's going to shield you, uh, shield you and he's going to flee seven ways. So he's like, you know, when my enemy tries to attack me, you know, God already has my back. Yep. You know what I mean? So I'm like, man, well, God has my back. I got this. I got this. You know, so life keep on throwing punches at me because I'm, I'm going to get it. <laughs> so <laughs> and not, I'm coming back. <laughs> so the process is expect as an entrepreneur for distractions to strengthen you yeah yeah not distraction did not distract you yeah it's supposed to add another layer of toughness and a lot of people in america today man they're pansies one thing goes wrong oh my god one thing goes wrong a whole week is done yeah right yeah um also it, it allows you to, to to really maximize your time because in my opinion you know what the big distraction is summer you know what the big distraction is holidays you know the big distraction is weekends Another distraction, anniversaries, birth, those are distractions. They say, well, Matt, business isn't all about business. And Okay, I, I, get, I totally get it. Did I say don't go to the birthday party? Did I say not go to the wedding? Did I say not go to the anniversary? I said, no, make an appearance. Go there. But don't spend a whole two, three, four days there mm -hmm. and spend another two, three, four days recovering from it. Mm -hmm. Like I know people, man, they celebrate their birthday. Here's run into somebody, they celebrate their birthday all month. My birthday month. It's my birthday month. <laughs> it's called birthday. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not birth month. <laughs> I'm my birthday. I was birthday. <laughs> right. right? And if you mm -hmm. do this thing called entrepreneurship right, every day is your birthday. Mm -hmm. You celebrate life. You, you celebrate the gift that was given you. You're not celebrating it one day. And you know what? I think that's where people in America, people who have a traditional job, are starved for recognition. <coughs> and by the way, don't we recognize people here as entrepreneurs in all PHP time. agency all the time? All the time. Yeah, all it's the my time. favorite part of the business. Yeah. Is recognition. That's what uh, Rosie, uh, our, our SMD, she loves recognition. Mm -hmm. She loves promotion. <laughs> She's always like, ah, promotions. Like, I can't wait for you guys to get promoted. I can't wait. I'm like, I'm the same way. I can't wait either. <laughs> Love Four it. thing expect when you're starting a business. It's a thing called W. It's a W word. It's Four letter word. word. <laughs> it's called one, two, three. Work. work. <laughs> <laughs> it's a work. Right? And someone says, Matt, you know, how many hours should I work as an entrepreneur? So 40 hours? So 40 hours? You have a 40 hour work week as an entrepreneur? I laugh at them. You know why? Because I used to have a part time job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you're not looking at doubling that minimum, 70. 80 hours, what the heck are you doing as an entrepreneur? You're only delaying your success, uh -huh. right? Listen, well, Matt, listen, you know, you know Sunday's, Sunday's the Lord's Day. Listen, if you read Genesis, God got to work first. He built something. Uh -huh. He didn't take a day off first. He built something. He worked all day. Now, I know he's got no need no sleep. But Monday he worked, Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday. Listen, if you, have, if you don't know how to create animals and separate the, the, the darkness from the light and create the heaven and water and separate land from water, you're still working. Okay? So we got a lot of work to do. So I don't want to under, 
talk this point because a lot of people think that they can do two, three, four hours worth of work and think they call themselves an entrepreneur and they're good. I mean, the, the book Four Hour Work Week even suggests that yeah, with, by Tim Ferriss. Yeah. Right? Or listen to it on audio. I mean, as entrepreneurs, do you guys work? Four, four hour work week? Oh, no, we, we work definitely. More. Maybe a four hour week sleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's different. I know a lot of people are scared of work because mm -hmm. they're used to job work where somebody's on your back all day yeah. trying to do this. Now that's work. Yeah, that's, that's work. That's now, labor. When you work for yourself and you're doing something that you love, it's addicting. And then you get to find out what, like, stretch yourself. You know, a lot of times we do enough and then we rest. We do enough and then we, but when you stretch yourself, you start to take your work ethic to levels where you don't even need the rest because you're not tired because you're mentally not drained. It's, the work it starts to feed you. The work starts to empower you. I actually get anxiety now when I don't have like a, a field training or something like, what am I doing sitting down? Like I wanna be in, mm -hmm. I wanna be in the, you know, in, in, out on the field. I wanna be helping a family because it's mission driven. You ever, you ever take a lunch break at five o'clock? Nah. Five o'clock p.m. I'm talking. Oh, five o'clock p.m. Um, I, 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 it's you work random. all day. You're like, yeah. oh shit, it's lunch. Well, it's random. Sometimes well, me, it's like well, at there's seven. Some days, man, there's some days, man, when, she when the hustle is strong. <laughs> yeah, when the, when your hustle is strong, there's some days where you forget to eat. Yeah. Like, there's been days where I forgot to eat, and then the next day I'm like, man, did I eat yesterday? I don't yeah. know. I'm like, but I'm not hungry. Let's get let's get to work. <laughs> you know, and it's just like, it's funny. yeah, like he like man. You have to work. You have to work 80, 90, 100 hours. You, you have to put in the work. You know, it's not going to be easy at all. And the reason why some people slack is because it's, it's not important to them. You know what I mean? The reason why you wake up late, the reason why you always start late is because that's not important to you. Mm -hmm. Whatever's behind that, you know what I'm saying? You're, it's, it's not important to you. So the reason why we wake up every morning the same time, the reason why we're out on the field, all, you know, working 80, 90, 100 hours, because people are behind us. We, we, you know, we have, it's more than just work. It's helping people. It's being passionate. It's being, it's growing the team. It's being around, you know, people who want to help the community, you know, but when you're selfish, when you're thinking about yeah. yourself and you're just thinking about, oh, 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 what about me? What about me? You know, no, it's about, Who's behind you? What about your kids? What about your husband? What you know what I mean? What mm. about your family? What about your mom? Yep. You know yeah. what I mean? So once so once you get over that selfish stage and you're just like, man, well let me get to work because I have people who are dependent on me. It's not only about me, it's about my two year old niece that's looking at me and she knows that I you know, like Diaz gone all the time because I'm working. Yep. And my parents they they barely see me. Why? Because I'm always working. But I know that I know that I'm working hard because I have people behind me, you know? Is just think about it like people every lazy day that you take this you're changing people it's it changes the people that you are meant to meet mm, you know what i mean yeah, yeah because you don't meet them yeah, yeah. Because you don't meet them at all because you decided to take that lazy decision you decided not to you know like it, it, man entrepreneurship <laughs> just it, it challenges you every single way especially mentally but yeah. if you're mentally strong and if you're like okay well when you when people, they raise the standards and you're just like well I'm gonna follow those standards I'm gonna I'm gonna raise the standards as well, then you just well, you can be prepared for everything because once you're mentally strong it's just like you could take anything really. That's it, work 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 work, yeah. work ethic. You gotta apply some work ethic. <laughs> and the reason why guys never get out of the business what they're looking for is not because when when, when I hear the stat that you know 98 percent of all business fail in the first two years, if so that, if that's the case then why are people start starting businesses? If a business is that bad, then why are people still doing it? You know what we find out? It's not because the business is bad, right? It's not because the business didn't work. It's because the entrepreneur, the worker didn't work, right? The, 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 the owner gave up, right? A, a friend of mine, uh, uh, Daniel Alark, veteran entrepreneur, created uh, create a company called Grunt Style. Just got uh, uh, posted in uh, Forbes magazine by Mark Rockefeller, wrote an article on his company. He started his business with $1,200, a t-shirt company. And it's become a military patriarchal lifestyle brand. $100 million company, $100 million in sales after starting business with 1200 bucks. And he said, you know what? I was about to quit 12 different times, but I didn't. And one rule I would give you guys is a 2-5-10 rule. This is Patrick's 2-5-10 rule. Two years to figure out business, <clears throat> five years to get some uh, uh, profits and get some uh, fruits of your labor, and 10 years of master. If you're unwilling to do that, then you're always gonna be going from job to job, opportunity to opportunity, and never get out of business what you're looking to get out of business. Last point, okay, last point. When you are starting to make some money and you are starting to get some free time, guess what you gotta do with that free time and that money? Reinvest.
<laughs> got to reinvest that back into you. Expand your marketing. Expand your reach. Uh, expand uh, uh, into personnel. Uh, one of the things I love being able to do is create jobs. See, capitalists, entrepreneurs, we create jobs. That's why if more people are entrepreneurs, not only do they not get in the unemployment line or ask government for a handout, but not only are they able to self-sustain themselves, but they're able to help other people get out of the unemployment line by creating a job. I mean, when, when you, you're talking about the people that you're developing, the people that you're growing, mm -hmm. and you see that gleam in their eye because you're, you're, you're reinvesting your money, right. your time, back into your people. Mm -hmm. How does it make you feel? I think that's the best feeling is when you can reinvest back into your team for, to help them grow because you're changing not only their life but their family's life and whoever comes across their path. And the best part of this business is when, like she said, she touched on it, the biggest part of success is when you take yourself out of the equation and you realize, okay, whose life am I going to impact today? And that's, I mean, that's the ultimate feeling is like when we do promotions, I don't care about my promotion. I mean, how many people on my team can I get promoted? You know, I'm almost in tears because it's like, I know her why. You know, she's, we were talking the other day and she's like, man, every time that we're in a meeting and you recite my why, she's like, I tear up. And I told her it's because I care about your why. And that's one thing I love about the culture of entrepreneurship, especially in the development side, is when you know other people's why, it's more than just we're working together. It's we're fighting for something bigger. Yeah. And when you can help them achieve that, I'm pretty sure you know the feeling. Yeah, you got toes fair. in the sand. How many people you're like, this is what it's about, you know? And that's that's what I'm getting to is like getting more people to become successful, and that feels so good. When I'm looking at my cash flow report, not for me, uh, but for other people in my team, and these people are making, I'm, I'm, right? These this is the first half of July. <clears throat> people are making fourteen thousand already this month, twelve thousand this month, nine thousand already this month. It's only the third week of the month. When people are making, you know, dollars for the month, and the average person is bringing home fifty-one thousand a year, right? Uh, and 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 look, look, my wife and I we're already at fifty-four thousand for the for the month, right? It, it it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling for me as a husband to have my wife be able to create this type of income, mm -hmm. that she's never ever going to look at corporate America again for a job, absolutely. Yeah, that she's awesome. not going to four hundred one k with matching with benefits. <laughs> what the heck is that? We're creating our own benefits. Right. right. We're creating our own uh, time schedule. Um, so these names, you know, and, and by the way, the average revenue that we're paying in commissions and fees to our guys is over 250000 a month already. We're, our payroll is over $3 million of commissions and fees to entrepreneurs and people who are independent contractors, agents, and agency builders. That's a great feeling. Yes. yes. Right? We're, um, uh, and, and as we wrap things up, Kevon, can you put that, uh, um, our, our big event, our big event uh, graphic up? And, and some of you are watching this right now, and some of you said, Matt, I'd really love to get that culture, that vibe that you got with Perla and Tone. And by the way, these are just two of the thousands we have across the country. I'm just glad they're close enough to come out here, and more importantly, they're performing enough to earn time here, because I just don't let anybody come up in here. Uh, they're performing, they're showing themselves as leaders in, in building the Best Plains office with Rudy and Rosie Ortiz out there. And, uh, uh, and you say, Matt, listen, Perla, Tone, I'd love to be in communication with you guys. I'd love to connect with you guys. Awesome. The best way to get a splash into entrepreneurship and to marinate into this new language, because here's the language that most of us grew up in. The language of, I don't have enough money. Well, uh, shut the window. We, are we air conditioned in a whole neighborhood? You know, close the fridge very fast because we're spoiling the food. Yeah. You, know, the, you, know, you remember that language? Yeah. Right? I've been in the shower too long. <laughs> been in the shower 10 minutes. Hey, the hot water ain't free. <laughs> That's the language of broken knees. Oh, yes. That's the language of the middle class. That's the language that many of you watching this video right now, whether live, podcast, or replay, have heard for a majority of your life. So if you expect to start a business, especially in the insurance industry, you got to expect to speak a different language. The language of wealth and ease. <laughs> I like that. Getting With the side of billionaires. I'm fluent in that. <laughs> right? Sandwiched well, by adversity well, well and conflict. Can. <laughs> well, they can. <laughs> so so we, 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 want, we want you guys to know that we have an event in Las Vegas exactly Ooh. a month from now. Can't wait. That yes. if you want to start a business, if you say, Matt, I want to hunker down, I want to change my life, register for our event in Las Vegas, August 16th through the 19th, Yes. right? Um, it's going to be at Caesars Palace. I stopped saying Little Caesars. <laughs> at Caesars Palace, August 16th through the 19th, we'll be staying there. 
listen, the value for this event, if you put all the speakers we have, we got, we got uh, entertainment of, of, Fre of Frederick De Silva, who's, a, who's like a Chris Angel guy, yeah. right? A mentalist and illusionist. We got a comedian, Maz Jobrani. He's got a Netflix special called I'm Not a Terrorist, but I play one on TV. Uh, <laughs> a, a Persian comedian, awesome, funny guy. Uh, then we got guest speakers. We got Wayne Gretzky. Ooh, the great one. Ooh. To talk about domination. Wow. And by the way, he doesn't do corporate events, but he decided to do one for us. After meeting with our CEO founder, Patrick Bed Davies, he's like, man, I got I to gotta do that with you guys. Same thing happened with Magic Johnson in, in January at our, our, our uh, last big event. Magic J Johnson came out. Now Wayne Gretzky's coming out. Um, John Calipari is going to talk about recruiting and building a championship team. He just uh, uh, launched his, uh, with ESPN 30 for, th uh, 30 for 30 special, One and Not Done. Oh, yeah. Great special. You know what, you know what is, uh, 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 his biggest heat, uh, uh, the, the conflict he has with his colleagues, is that they think that he's eroding the capacity of college sports because kids aren't getting an education and kids aren't getting a job because they're dropping out of high school go to the pros. You know what he says? Is it about jobs? Yeah. Is this conversation about jobs? Well, I'm creating one of the greatest jobs any kid can ever yeah. have. It's called creating, the NBA. Creating millionaires. I'm creating millionaires. <laughs> yep. I have the capacity to change this kid's life, and more importantly, his family's and family's life. Heck yeah, I'm going to use a platform of college basketball to get guys into the pros. And I think it was 2010 or 2011, it was John Wall, I think they lost a championship that year to West Virginia. But the Kentucky college basketball team, first time ever in the history of professional sports, the starting five, mm -hmm. all got drafted in the first round. Wow. All got drafted in the first round. Wow. And so that kind of laid his, his deal. So we're going to hear from John Calipari it's at our convention. So and when we're looking at our convention, if you look at the value that we're providing, these speakers alone for a, a venue like this, it normally cost some, somebody $1,500, $2,000, $3,000 for this type of, type of uh, convention ticket, especially for three and a half days. And depending on where you sit, right? It normally costs one fifteen hundred, two thousand, three thousand dollars. Our tickets, two hundred seventy-five bucks, right? And I think we have forty tickets left. Forty, yeah, forty. We have forty-two. We have forty tickets left. Um, we are going to sell out at four thousand tickets. We are, we have forty-two tickets left. I'm not just not telling you that because I'm trying to sell you a ticket. That's the le le legitimate number. We promoting been promoting this thing for the last two three weeks. Oh, excuse me, two three months. And you guys need to get a, a hold of your ticket before they completely run out. And by the way, what are we doing afterwards? We're going to party. Way noon party. We got an after party. Woo! Pearl qualify. Right? <laughs> we, got an, we got an after party at Wayne Woo! Newton's $70 million house. Does he have monkeys and stuff? What was it? Yeah. We, face painting monkeys? <laughs> we got face painting painting monkeys. That's great. In his house. It's, it's going to be a crazy after party. So Frank Cardone's going to be there. So, oh, but I forgot to mention <laughs> the connector between the two of you guys. <laughs> Grant Cardone just got added as, as a speaker. Uh, he'll be on, uh, on, Friday, on Friday's agenda. So John Calipari, Wayne, uh, Wayne uh, Gretzky, Grant Cardone, Maz Jobrani, Frederick De Silva, August 16th, August 19th, you need to be there. He said, Matt, listen, I'm not part of PHB, PHB agency. Don't matter. You buy your ticket, we'll find a way for you to be part of PHB agency. Matt, I haven't started a business yet. Don't matter. Get yourself a ticket. We'll find a way for you to become an entrepreneur and align with PHB agency. We'll get it done. If you don't have anything going on right now to help you make an illegitimate 12 to 18 months, 100,000, 250,000, 300,000 dollars a year, I encourage you, connect with us, message me, drop a comment. However, connect with Perla, connect with Tone, doesn't matter. Be in connection. That's what entrepreneurs do. They reach out. Mm -hmm. They ask quality questions. They ask constructive questions to get them a life that they want away from where they're at today. So with that being said, guys, Thanks for tuning in. Um, uh, this Saturday, uh, for, those, the, for those of you that are in Chicago, say, you know, Matt, I really want to check out you guys a little bit more. I may not make it to Vegas, but I want to check you guys on a local level. Listen, we got people here flying in from New York, uh, Maryland, uh, Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin, the surrounding uh, Midwest region here, coming to our event this Saturday, where? At Hamburger University, that's correct. <laughs> Hamburg University on McDonald's campus at the Hyatt Lodge. We'll drop some information here too as well in the captions so therefore you can connect with us. That event starts at 9.30 a.m. Hyatt Lodge at the Hamburg University at the McDonald's campus in Oak Brook. Entrepreneur, 
workshop. Okay? Uh, guys, thanks for coming on the show. No, thank oh, thanks you for, for having, having us. us. It's so it's excited. Awesome. <laughs> Fun, this is one of my favorite topics here. What to expect when starting a business, especially in the insurance industry. Be sure to like our page. Be sure to share our video. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our page. We just launched episode 12 of our vlog. I just went to Miami. Make sure you check out that vlog of us building an insurance agency and insurance division in Miami uh, with Brittany Palayas and Tony Martinez, former New York Life agent and former Transamerica WMG agent. That being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your comments. Um, quick shout outs to Giovanni Mondragon, Yvette Alerio. Is that your cuz? <laughs> and, uh, and, and Asa, oh, is that your cuz? Yeah. And uh, at Asa Patterson, thanks for your comments. And thanks for tuning in. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Have a great week. Peace. See you next Wednesday. God bless you guys.